What's up, Internets? This is Fuzzy Tolerance screencast number 19. This one's going to be a little different. I'm going to do the presentation I gave, the Ignite talk, if you will, at GIS Day. The thing about my presentations, if you haven't seen them, is they're not very good after the fact. They seem to go okay at the time. People seem to like them. It's, it's hard to tell. GIS people are very polite. You could probably go sing You Are My Sunshine for 20 minutes and people would still clap. What are they going to do after a talk? Go, hey, dude, you sucked. So it's the final arbiter of whether a talk is good or not, I think, is whether underpants were thrown at any point during a talk. And that's never happened. I mean, one time something was thrown and it could have been underpants, I, but I, I don't know for sure. It took the whole lectern out. Um and I don't know what it was because I ran. No, it's hard to tell, but I think my talks go pretty well at the time. Afterwards, my talks are not useful at all because I usually don't do slideshows just because I'm not very good at them. Uh, you go see somebody like Paul Ramsey's a PowerPoint ninja. Um, I'm not a PowerPoint ninja. So I usually just talk, which means if you weren't there to see it, I got nothing for you. Even when I do do slideshows, like in this case, they're usually just like pictures of cats because uh, staring at me for 20 minutes nonstop is probably probably not healthy. I'm like the sun. You know, look at me, look away. Look at me, look away. So I'll throw some pictures of cats and stuff on there just so people can, can, can look away. Uh, yeah, so that's my talks hour of the fact. And then I realized, of course, I can just redo the talk on YouTube and it'll get out to, you know, dozens of people and uh, probably change their lives and, and that kind of thing. So here's an Ignite talk. If you're not familiar, Ignite talks are five minutes long. They're timed. So it's not like you have a 20 minute talk and, you know, who knows how long before you can wrestle them off the stage. They're five minutes, 20 slides slides advance every 15 seconds automatically so it's if you haven't seen one they're kind of neat they're really a pain in the ass to do because you have to practice because that timing is has to be precise and I'm not a presentation um, practicer if you've seen any of my talks you you I probably didn't need to tell you that so let's do this oh I should say too I I'm gonna quit teasing you in a minute and just do this but if, you, if you're using uh, LibreOffice Impress or OpenOffice Impress, the presentation console or presenter console is awesome. It's really good. Uh, you have to install it like a pseudo app, get something or another on Ubuntu. I'll put that in the show notes. But it's really good, especially for this kind of talk, because you see the slide you're on, the slide that's coming, and it's got a timer there. So... That helps. I didn't actually, you know, it's Windows and PowerPoint at, at the talk, so I just kind of winged it there. But I recommend that if you're doing an impressed talk and you're at a lectern and you can do a split screen kind of thing. Without further ado, here is the Ignite talk given at GIS Day 2012, Charlotte, North Carolina, to a crowded, full, half full, there were people there room. Gather around my GIS brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about design. And we're going to talk about design because we suck at this. And there's no reason why that should be too true. GIS people, we're hip. We're, we're pretty trendy. Sure, we're not as cool as those latte-sipping, MacBook-carrying, Prius-driving, too tight pant wearing designers you find Wi-Fi squatting at every Starbucks in America. But we're not bad. We should be able to do this. And design is hard, but it's not complicated. Clarity and familiarity. If you find yourself making a user's manual for a web page, stop and ask yourself why you're making a web page that requires a user's manual. Consistence. Everything on your page should work the same as everything else. Concision. Pascal once wrote to a colleague, I apologize for the length of this letter. Had I more time to write it, it would have been much shorter. Aesthetics. Don't use Comic Sans ever again. Responsiveness. Thumb twiddling on the web is bad. Efficiency. Having to click on 10 different things to get to what you want on the web is bad. 
forgiveness. People do crazy things in their web browsers. Don't let them break your stuff. That's the basics of design. Now, I'm not saying design isn't hard because it is, but we're GIS people. We used to read this many books just to make a map and we thought that was okay. Design is hard, but GIS people can do hard things. We can do good design. Take a look at these examples. The side on the left, you go there, your brain says, search, because that's all you can do. Device on the right, your brain says, touch it. You can hand that to a five-year-old. They'll have it figured out in two minutes flat and be up and running. No! That's what people, that's what your brain says when it sees something like this. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tobin, oh, come on. We haven't done sites like that since 2009. We're much better now. Not really. I mean, the aesthetics have gotten better, but in terms of usability, is this really all that different? Now the four cardinal design sins GIS people make. The first one you can really see in these last two slides. You're trying to make ArcMap in a web browser. That's adorable. Here's the thing. I like ArcMap as much as the next person, but it's taken week-long intensive training sessions and months and years of practice to get good at ArcMap. This is the amount of time people spend on your web mapping site. You're not building Facebook. They don't have time for ArcMap. Stop trying to give it to them. Design sin number two. Well, we'll just throw button number 35 on there. And if people don't need to use it, they can just ignore it. I understand where this comes from. When you have kids and one gets on the other's nerves, you tell the one to ignore the other one. When that doesn't work, you assume you have defective kids. Well, I have a message to you from your kids. They're not defective. They can no more ignore that other kid going, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, than you could down a bottle of hot sauce and ignore the burning sensation. Human beings find it impossible to ignore things they perceive directly with their senses. Find the word print in that paragraph. Could you find it? Fantastic. Now find it. Oh, I forgot. Ignore everything that isn't print. Did that help? Not really. Everything you put on your user interface has a cognitive weight for the user. They will be overburdened very quickly. If you have things on your page most people don't use, get them off your page. Which brings me to design sin number three. We don't know pe how people use our stuff. We have no idea. We don't collect usability metrics. We don't collect usage metrics. We don't collect any kind of metrics. We just think they will think like us and we're not normal people. We keep building these web portals. Uh, single topic maps get three times the traffic. We keep adding base maps. Only 2% of users ever change the base map. We're building things in people don't use. And when you put things on an interface and people don't use them, it makes the user experience worse. Oh, that full screen map button. 0.5% of people, that means they click it by accident. Design sin number four, stop using flash and silver light. Within the next two years, half your users are going to be on mobile devices. This is what your flash and silver light maps look like on mobile devices. Stop doing this. So learn a little about design and start avoiding those four GIS design sins. We've been doing bad design for a long time. We can do better. We have to do better. Let's do good design and make the web a better place. And that was the Ignite talk I gave at GIS Day. Again, there were no underpants thrown, but it seemed to have gone well. Um, I really mostly have to thank the cats for that. Now those stats on the uh, you know usage and time and stuff, that came from that post uh, Brian Timney uh, did, which I'll link to in the show notes, this, that post that I've, I've probably read that 20 times. I'm like, holy crap, I've been doing the wrong thing my whole life. So that was the Ignite Talk. I hope you like that. And what I'll probably start doing is just after I do a talk, um, I will just do it again on here. And that way it can be of use to people that weren't there to see it at the time. It's Thanksgiving week here in the States, so if you're here in the States or you're from the States or you just do Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving. I will see you next month. Bye-bye.